So, uh, speaking of uh, relationship, the subject I chose because it has a direct connection with your health. And uh, I wish we would have here more younger couples who are only starting their married life. They would probably learn something new. And perhaps I myself can learn from you guys. You know, I believe you're married, right? For how many years? We've been together for about 18, 18 years. 18 years. And you? 43. 43. So I think I'm trying to give you a lecture, but I can learn something from you. Well, uh, let's, uh, as an introduction, uh, purpose of family institution. So what do you think family is given for? What's the purpose of family existence? To have parents for children. Have, I mean, to have, to produce, <laughs> yeah. to multiply the earth. What else? Any other ideas? What is family given for? Well, uh, just I want to mention one Bible verse. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. So uh, basically, yes, welcome. Yes, take a seat. So basically, marriage starts, somebody falls in love with a boy, with a girl, then the proposal. And I remember when I just came to U.S. and my English was, uh, I'm still improving my English, and, uh, but in those days, it was uh, 2001 when I first came to U.S. And uh, we went, I was living in California. And uh, of course, I was using the word as the dictionary translates them. And the dictionary, the Russian word for to suggest something, what I'm suggesting something to you, is propose. <laughs> and uh, that's how the dictionary gives me. And we were out with a youth in California. And there were about several boys and girls. And uh, there was a girl. And I took a seat and says, I propose you. And everybody, yay, Gennady. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was trying to say that I'm suggesting you or, you know, take a seat. Uh, I was offering her. But in those days, I didn't really know the meaning of that not every time works as a dictionary says. You have to know the language by the meaning. So, uh, but sometimes a marriage, and what people promise, still death, and so on, turns into something like this. So people feel that they are not happy in marriage. They feel like it's a bondage. It's something like a yoke. It's something that they would like to get rid of, but they have to stay together. Uh, statistic as of uh, 2012, that uh, almost 2 million and 200,000 of marriage are registered per year in US. That's a 2012 statistics. And unfortunately, you see the rate of divorces. It's uh, about a million, 900 plus thousand of these marriages end up in divorce. And the average years of living together, counting, you know, the shortest, which, uh, you know, there are some cases where there is a couple hours and then they divorce. And they end up maybe living even 30 years together. So the middle average of uh, time spent in marriage until people divorce is eight years. Unfortunately, this is the sad reality. As of October 30, 2012, the statistics in America, there is one divorce approximately every 36 seconds. That's nearly 2,400 divorces per day, 16,800 divorces per week, and 876,000 divorces per year. 
that's reality as of 2012. But unfortunately, every year it grows. It goes higher and higher and higher. If the percent, uh, I don't have it here on slide, but in 1900, the, per the percentage of divorce was 4.7. Uh, after the f First World War, it somehow it increased a lot, so it went to about 17, while in 2000, it was 54. So after 2000, the rate kind of went a little bit down, so now it's about 50, uh, so that's the average. So and according to the statistic 2012, it's about 45% uh, divorce uh, rate. Why there are conflicts in the family? So what makes people to divorce? What makes people to make their children to choose? Now, honey, you have to choose with whom you're going to live, with me or with a daddy or vice versa. If to summon all the reasons, I narrow them down to big, two big reasons. First, character defects. Second, ignorance. And they are interchangeable. Ignorance and character defects, they work like a package. And I'll explain you in a, on illustrations how. Welcome, please come close and take seats. Uh, and as an illustration, here is a math problem. Raise your hand, who can solve this math problem? It's a very simple, to me. Anybody can solve this problem? Well, imagine your fa there is issue in a family, it's a, like a math problem. There are several options. You can go mad about it. I cannot solve it. And you can throw the book and you can hit the screen. On, um, you know, if you have a test or something, or you could do something, or take a piece of paper and just try to see if you can. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can ignore it. That's an option. Or you can learn to solve it. Each problem in the family is like a math problem. There are three options you have. You can go mad about it and express and pour your emotions on your partner, or you can ignore it, which not is the sometimes is a good solution, but it's not the best solution because uh, ignoring once, ignoring twice, it accumulates and then it creates a gap in relationship because a partner feels that you just ignore him or her, or you can learn to solve it. That's the best solution. When you start your life in marriage, there's many things you have to learn. Let me bring you one example. A couple was celebrating 50 years anniversary, living together. And a husband says, honey, do you mind if just today, after 50 years living together, if you give me the middle, the softest part of the bread, because I, I love it so much and I was always giving it to you. She says, honey, actually, I love the crunchy part, but I was always giving it to you because I thought this is the best and was giving it to you. What it means, that all these 50 years, they were taking so much about one another so he was giving the best to her, what he thought is the best. And she was sacrificing the best, giving to him. And he was eating the things which he doesn't like the most. Because sometimes tell what you feel is important. So you have to learn one about another. And we'll learn some tricks uh, as we go along. So there is something different between male and female. And this is where ignorance creates problem. Sometimes men 
must learn at least some basics, some minimum about how the female brain works. And sometimes wives has to learn something about how the male brain works. And knowing those basics sometimes helps to solve the problem or helps to avoid the problem, not to even enter into the problem. You know, like uh, says that uh, intellectual person can climb every mountain. A wise person has a way to avoid the mountain. So men versus women. I'll bring you some clue how our brain functions. So in blue is a man, in pink is a ladies. Man thinks, let's say it's a something. So he's thinking about, a woman feels about it. A TV program, an election of a president, uh, a buying a, a refrigerator, uh, buying a car, he thinks, he feels. Of course, there is, I know a family that everything is opposite, but in general, man decides based on facts and experience. Woman decides based on emotion and expectation. For example, when a family decides to buy a car, if man is the one who's going to the one who's going to drive the car, he thinks, he googles which car is the most reliable. Maybe that's not the best he likes, but this is the most reliable. Which car will cause less problem or will require less to go to the service? And he thinks, well, I paid maybe a couple thousand more for the Toyota, but I can rely more on this car, for example. While how the ladies choose a car? I like, I like this red one. This, I want this car. How they buy things for the house? Because it's on sale. Emotions. How the man usually buy something? Because it needs. It might be not on sale, but he needs that tool, so he's going to buy it because I need that particular tool. Why look one another? <laughs> did, I, did it click something? <laughs> Men state his needs. Honey, I don't want this. I don't like this. Uh, I remember uh, meeting a, f a couple in Georgia. And uh, uh, as we were serving lunch, and uh, he said, somehow we started to speak about, uh, he was giving me some clue how to choose if I wasn't married in those days and says, look, that she would be a good cook, it's very important. And he says, when my wife makes something that I don't like, I says, honey, it's so delicious. I wish you to make it again next year. <laughs> <laughs> Woman makes men figure out her needs. When I found this, I said, I have to talk about this. Because even in my family, my wife says, you know, if you love me, you have to figure out. You have to feel what I like. How can I feel? I cannot read your brain. <laughs> I guess somehow we have to live with this. And we have to squeeze our mind and try to understand what she likes and what she doesn't like. And sometimes these things, understanding how the male and female brain functions, helps solve, to solve some problems in the family or helps to avoid certain problems. Let me give you some pictures because, you know, a, a picture worth a thousand words sometimes. So I'll show you some pictures and then we'll go more into theory. Man versus woman. I've got nothing to wear again. 
I know what I'm going to wear for the weekend. So she has a lot of skirts, dresses, coats, shoes, low heel, higher heel, pink, uh, reddish, dark red, uh, blue, white, black. And yet, I don't know what to wear. <laughs> I always know this is for sport, this is for church, this is for work, period. We function differently than the ladies. And the ladies function differently than their husbands. God created us in a such a way. So we complete one another if we learn how to match it. So when you solve a puzzle, you see there are some pieces which match and some pieces which doesn't match. So life in marriage, it's like a puzzle. It's a lifelong puzzle solving. So, and the harder you work, more matches you find, and the better picture comes. So, uh, s some people, they live long, like it's eight, ten years, and they divorce because there is no picture. There is no family to be called. And some people live ten years, and when you look at their family, you can see a picture. As a happy family, as, as a couple. So, you see, sometimes emotions, female's emotions, we as husbands, as men, we have to learn to live with it. And we have to learn how to cope with those emotions. You know, like, when finally she chooses, uh, what she's going to wear for that, that, that particular event. And when the husband compliments, wow, you look gorgeous. And usually I look horrible, yeah? <laughs> <coughs> well, sometimes those emotions are hard to understand. For example, let me give you another picture. How women pick a shampoo? By effectiveness, by brand, by aroma, by effect on hair, ingredients, bottle color, bottle shape, and so on. How a man chooses a shampoo? A shampoo. Of course, I'm speaking in, in, in general. For example, next picture, I'm a graphic designer. So I will, I will di differentiate more colors than that lady shown on the picture. So I'm very precise in picking a color. But in general, men are generalizing things. We have tendency as a masculine to narrow down. OK, this is pink, this is green. While female, uh, there was a test made. Uh, the people made a test scientist. So they allowed about mm, 50 females, different age, and uh, 50 men, different age. Uh, they, they would let them into the room, and they would sit for three minutes, and there was a setup on the table, something a setup on the table. So you look three minutes on that, you come out, and you describe majority, about 80% of men, it says there was a picture, there was a bread, there was that, there was that. So they, they describe as what? You know, they mention A, B, C, D. There was a picture, there was a bread, there was a plate, there was that, there was that, period. When they were asked, what was the picture on the plate? Many had hard time to remember even what color was the plate. They just remember there was a plate there. When the females, sometimes they would forget the things from that list. They would miss a bread or they would miss a plate. But they would be able to describe in details how that plate looked like. And usually they would describe the object which would attract the attention the most. So if they would like the plate, they would describe it in details. 
If they would like how the bread looked like, they would describe the height of the bread, the color, the, uh, what was the seeds on the top of the bread. Uh, you know, it was a sesame or a sesame seed or, you know, flax seed, whatever was, you know, details about bread. Something that works in a marriage. Sometimes we like to generalize and sometimes by generalizing we may hurt our spouse by generalizing things. And we have to learn that ladies, they want our attention in details. So if by chance you know that she went to do something to her hair, just make sure that you compliment after she comes back. That's how most li uh, in, in most cases that lady's brain works. But the problem is that sometimes we don't see any difference. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies sometimes they go more emotion while the men uses more kind of a logic scheme of thinking. So we as a man we tend to think of uh, objects in order. A, B, C, D. Two plus two equals four. Ladies sometimes feel that two plus four, they feel it's five. They know it's four, but they feel about five. I remember a conversation of my mom. She was talking to somebody called her, and suddenly she says, what? Wow. And then she, she, she loved to do the Wow, it cannot be. And suddenly, dad already standing there, you know, just waiting until she ends the phone call to ask what's happening. So what happened? Oh, she bought a, she bought a dozen of eggs and one was broken. <laughs> But my mom was so emotional when she was talking on the phone that you could think, oh, I mean, she got a cancer. Okay, she's on the way to die, probably, that who was ever she's talking. And that's just a broken egg, you know. So sometimes they go so emotional, and we have to learn to live with it. And uh, at the same time, ladies sometimes have to learn that if they're not complimented, it doesn't mean that they ignored. Because sometimes, w if we don't see a major difference, so for example, if you had a long hair and suddenly you have a short hair, or you were dressed in white and you now you're dressed in black, we can notice that. But if it's just was, you know, hair trimming, she looks, you know, she likes it. <laughs> we don't notice it. But the main problem that when, when emotions and uh, men and female brains, when they collide, problem number one, lack of patience. A moment of patience in a moment of anger saves you a hundred moments of regret. I don't know who said these wise words. <coughs> I just found them but they have a very deep wisdom in it. A moment of patience in a moment of anger. How many times do we regret, oh, I wish I can not to say that or not to do that. Let's go to practical life. Patience everywhere and always. This is a picture of bathroom shower. That's his, that's hers. <laughs> Sometimes, and that can be in the kitchen, that can be in the living room, that can be in the office, that can be uh, uh, like at my home, we have a cabinet with the drawers. Two drawers are mine, four drawers are hers, my wife's. So, uh, 
we have to understand that sometimes if we get married, there are things we have to use to live with it. And unless you are ready for changes, you shouldn't get married. So patience or lack of patience is the problem number one. I want to use another Bible verse. It's describing in Re Revelation 14, 12, it's describing the characteristic of holy people. And it describes three main characteristics. That they keep the commandments of God and they have faith of Jesus. But the sentence begins, here is the patience of the saints. So why people are saints? Why a couple, they can call them, you know, a wonderful couple or a happy marriage? Because there is patience in the family. Patience or lack of patience leads to stress. Do you like desserts? Everybody likes desserts, no? I found this on the internet and I thought it would be very interesting to present it to you. Stressed is dessert spelled backwards. <laughs> so either you have desserts or you are stressed. So sometimes when we have to learn something or we have to live with something of our spouse we get impatient we get angry about it and we always try to change our partner never try to change your partner if you want to change something you have to change yourself and yourself only not that yourself and then your partner yourself and yourself only you have to learn to live with it or with uh, certain actions, with a certain, uh, where the objects are located or with a certain things. Because <coughs> impatience leads to stress. So besides you getting angry and making a conflict, who is angry? Me, right? So who is stressed? So, for example, if those bottles in a shower bothers me, and every time I go to shower, it bothers me, or something other bothers me, who gets angry? I get angry. Who is stressed? I am stressed. And then I talk about it. And then I pour my negative emotions to my, on my wife then there is a conflict and there is more stress so many health problems start in your brain many people have very poor health only due to stress not because they are overworked not because they eat a lot of junk just because they are over stressed inside their family. Uh, Dr. J. Winner, and uh, director of the stress management program for Sansom Clinic in Santa Barbara, California. Stress doesn't only make us feel awful emotionally. It can also exacerbate just about any health condition you can think of. So if you have genetically, we are, uh, have kind of a predisposition to certain diseases. And when we are stressed, those diseases are developed. So some people, when they're stressed, they have 
uh, stomach ulcer, they have gastritis, some have the heart problems, some have uh, problems with allergy, some have, uh, they cannot fall asleep and due to that they feel weak and tired. So every person have their own kind of tendency to a certain group of disease. And when they are stressed, those things are brought up. So uh, stress helps to develop those th sicknesses or those health problems. Studies have found many health problems related to stress. Stress seems to worsen or increase the risk of conditions like obesity, heart disease, Alzheimer disease, diabetes, depression, gastrointer gastrointestinal problems, and asthma. Let me give you an example. For example, when people are stressed, what do they usually do? Eat a lot and they cannot sleep. What happens? I don't know if anyone you remember a lecture about stress we had, but I'll just briefly tell you. When person is stressed, he is highly dehydrated. Therefore, when person is highly dehydrated, our brain needs water. Where the brain takes it if we are dehydrated? From the organs which are not life important. For example, mucus in the stomach. It's 98% water and only 2% is a protein which holds that water together. That mucus which protects the, all the intestine in the stomach from being uh, eaten by the ferments and acids. When person is stressed, chronically stressed, that mucus gets thinner and thinner. And then the gastric acids, they begin to bother. And what people feel? Some pain, which is called pregastritis. If they don't fix it, they develop a gastritis. If they don't fix it, they develop an ulcer. If they don't fix it, they end up being on the surgical, in a sur surgery, or they end up having cancer. And it's all due to stress. So you see, it's not that today I'm stressed and tomorrow I have a problem. It's developed step by step, step by step. Year after year, it's developed. So chronic stress, what it does to us, it affects your brain. You feel tired, lack of sleep. Suppress your thyroid. And there's a lot of problem with that. Cause blood sugar imbalances. Rises blood pressure. Reduces your immunity and ability to heal increases fat deposits that are associated with heart attacks, strokes, and elevated bad cholesterol. Have you ever thought that the problems in the family can lead to heart attack? So you see, it's directly linked. Now, coming back to the question we had on the table, what can I do about to have less stress in my family? Patience. Patience, thank you. But I'm impatient. As I said, change yourself, do not change your partner. Sometimes we try to change, I mean, not sometimes, a, by human, it's a human. And by default, we are trying to change somebody, and we are trying to blame somebody. Somebody is at fault. When we discuss about human defects of character, which cause problem in the family, 
there are main of them I just listed here. Pride and selfishness. I said so. And sometimes it's hard to give up. <coughs> sometimes it's hard to say I'm sorry. There is a saying, I know I'm wrong, but can you at least say sorry? <laughs> I know I'm wrong, but can you at least say sorry? Sometimes that's how the, the, this uh, saying illustrates the relationship. So people have such a big ego, such a, a lot of pride that they cannot admit their mistakes. Greed or cupidity when what leads to a lot of problems. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, usually somebody in a family is a more spender <coughs> and somebody in a family is somebody who, a saver. Usually that's how it, somebody is a spender, somebody is a saver. And when it comes to spending, well, let's get this one. It's 30% off. Do we really need it? What is 30% off? So you see, sometimes money management, unless there is a, a wise approach to that, it causes a lot of problems. Like one says, when one thing, uh, one man was saying, one thing I learned, I never give my credit card to my wife. Uh, it can be the opposite. I'm not saying, I'm not blaming only ladies. Somebody in a family usually is a spender. Somebody who buys things. And learning to manage finances in a family is a very important thing. And ignorance in this area leads to a lot of divorces. Ignorance specifically in the area of money management leads to a lot of divorces. Uh, have you ever listened to the radio program to, the, uh, to Ramsey? Dave Ramsey. So he gives a lot of good advices. So basically, people who want to learn, there is a way to learn. There's Google, there are radio programs, there are books. But you remember that math problem? In the beginning, as I gave you an, an illustration, you can go mad about it. How could you spend so much money? Or you can learn about it. Yelling never helps to solve a problem. But talking, reading, listening together, had that helped? <coughs> Falsity, lying one to another. Again, I don't know if that's the best word I chose that I went by dictionary. <laughs> how many families are ruined because, how many lives are ruined because they live in a constant lying one to another. There is a lack of trust. Family is, happy family is built on trust. Sharing bank accounts, buying things together, asking one another, what do you think if I buy this? What do you think if I spend for this? Uh, planning together. It is, it's very important because otherwise, if somebody makes a decision, all of this steps in. So I buy because I just think. I like it. So I'm not asking my wife. This is pride, number one. It's already a problem that I'm not asking her. I'm not considering her opinion. It's already selfishness. Then I spend money the way I want because I'm not a single person. It's a couple. It's two of us. So we manage money together. 
So before I buy, we have to discuss if it's a good thing to spend money for. Then, if I buy, and I know she will be not happy about it, I lie. And thus, I involve all three. And when she figures out about that, all these are escalated to a conflict. And if, if those things are repeated and repeated, it end up, ends up in disaster. Uh, husband and wife, oh, every day they were yelling one to another. And they had in their neighborhood, as they were living in apartments and next door, there was a couple living there about the same age, but they never heard yelling in that apartment. So one day, husband says, when he was in a good mood, I am wondering how they live, our neighbors, that they never yell one to another. So one day, they decided just to listen and to, to watch. So for a while, they were listening, watching, and a husband came to conclusion, you know what, honey, I found the answer. In our home, everybody is right. In their home, everybody is wrong. I mean, admitting that I'm wrong. Sorry, I'm wrong. My mistake. Well, in our ha family, nobody ever admits, I'm right. You have to say sorry. You see, true love, we have to understand, is not an emotion. True love is, uh, you know, when a young couple, they just uh, about to get married or just married, you know, they excite, this first excitement, the feelings are there. And uh, when there is a snow, snowing and cold outside, and he would say, Oh, I love how the snowflakes just lay on your hair. It seems romantic. But a husband who is really loving her, his wife, you know what he will do? Honey, it's cold. Here's your hat. He will not stay complimenting how the snowflakes fell on your hair. He knows that it's cold and then she will be, have a headache. So he runs and gets her Hat. Yes. I have a story about similar to that. My husband is not one to buy me flowers or candy or whatever. But I told my daughter once, I said, when I was working and I had to go out, we live on a private road and it's hot. And I said, when it would snow, daddy would go out there, shovel, you know, make a road. He would clean off my windshield, you know, my car. Well, flowers are important, and ladies will admit yeah, that. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm just saying, because I understand. My husband was like that, and to me, that showed that he was thinking about me and making it safe for me to go. Yes. Uh, well, my wife works, and she has to go to work. She, at 6 a.m. in the morning, she has to be at work. And uh, when it's cold season, Sometimes I get up with her about 5.15. I run in my underwear outside <laughs> and turn the, her car on. So by the 20 minutes she's getting ready, it would be warm inside. And I just jump back <laughs> into my bed. I want to read you something. It's a letter from a boy who was in love. He was writing a letter and he says, for, for you, I am ready to climb the highest mountain. For you, I am ready to swim across the ocean. For you, I am willing, and so on and so on. P.S. We'll come on Sunday if there will be no rain. <laughs> so you see, it explains everything. So if weather permits, if it will be, no, if it will be sunny and beautiful, then I'll come. Otherwise, I'll stay home. So what can you expect from such a husband? <laughs> 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 
so let's make a conclusion. Uh, healthy relationship, it's a healthy life. It's a happy life. When uh, we discuss about love, we have to remember love is not feelings. It's not emotions. It's not how you feel about it. It's a principle, principle of life. I've been blessed with my wife. Even if I offended her, even if she would be very upset with me, the dinner still would be served. I mean, it's like a must-be routine. So it doesn't matter, you know, if, if there is a conflict or no conflict. You know, dinner is dinner, and we eat together. We may eat in silence, but we eat together. <laughs> so. Uh, of course, that happens very rarely, and uh, I'm thankful to God for my wife, but I have to admit that uh, she's changed a lot, and she complimented me that I've changed a lot over the years living together. So the, but the one thing what I've learned, as I learned from my parents, and uh, they give me some clue how to have a happy life. And my dad told me, because when I was young, we used to have evenings of open heart. So we would sit in a circle, not necessarily in a circle, we would maybe just be in a couch, you know, very win winter evening, you know, just having a very nice atmosphere. And we would have an open, open heart evening. We would speak about the defects of one another. And they would speak, of course, as I was the little one, I, I had the most. As parents, they would educate me. So, you know, your attitude in the school and so on. But we would, they would, we would discuss about their defects. Uh, uh, my husband saying, you know what, you do that and that, which is not nice. It would be ni better if you would do that way. And my wife, my mom and my mother would say, you know, that and that. You know, I ask you many times, please change it. And that helped me because when I got married, I introduced that in my family. And uh, that solved our problems. So basically, we just celebrated 11 years of marriage. We never had a scandal, if you believe me or not. There was, in 11 years, we did not have a scandal. Yeah, there was some tension, misunderstanding, but if you want to believe me or not, but my wife, in 11 years, she never yelled at me, neither me and her. One thing I learned from my dad, sit together and discuss. But that was hard to introduce. You know why? Because when we married, my wife told me, you know, if you love me, you have to know. You, have, uh, you remember I told you in the beginning. She told me that was her philosophy. If you love me, you have to know what I like. Or you have to know what I'm, how I feel about it. And one day I said, honey, I'm not God to read your heart. You need to <coughs> express yourself. You like it, say I like it. If you don't like it, say I don't like it. So whatever you like about me, tell me. Compliment me about it. Whatever you don't like what I do, tell me I don't like it, period. Let me know what you don't like, so I will avoid that. It was hard to introduce this, you know, a moment of open heart. But once we establish that in a family, it really works, miracles. So, uh, as you remember, I showed this a slide. Stressed is a dessert if you read backwards. So uh, we would like to show you uh, a, uh, uh, by the way, before we switch to next step, any questions to my lecture? No? OK, let's move to the next step. Uh, Melanie, I have to share something that, of course, by uh, Yes, please. <laughs> but it's so much better. And it was interesting before we got married, uh, he told the priest that married us 
Yes. Uh, we've, never, we've never forgotten that. And uh, we have just had, as you said, a, a wonderful marriage and relationship. But I think my being assured by a priest that, that it's okay to be a little afraid to do something. And it made my husband feel better knowing, well, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be a good husband and we're not going to have a good relationship. We do have an excellent relationship. Well, uh, I love hearing that it's okay to have cold feet. Uh, sometimes a wise advice can help. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Good. Because I'm a former teacher. You don't have patience as a, as a teacher. You don't have patience to be a wise audience. Yes. Uh, but sometimes people patience at w patient at work and they're not patient at home. Uh -huh. uh, well, everyone's different. We're like snowflakes. So we can't really tell anything. Oh, yes. Uh, as I said, in, I, I repeated several times, I'm generalizing. Yes. Uh, yeah, because in most cases, this is the difference between the female and male brain and the, the, the way of approaching things in life, how to solve them. But it not necessarily exactly works that way. So family is a puzzle. You have to find in each situation, in each discussion, a match. And you find, they have to find that solution. Okay, this matches this and we are building a picture. It's a lifelong work to build that picture. And uh, uh, <laughs> just a joke to tell you in the end. Uh, so a couple celebrated their 50th anniversary living together and they decided to divorce later, a couple of years later. So the judge is asking, you know, people, what's wrong with you? You know, why are you, husband, divorcing her? She says, why I'm at, why I'm at sleep? She takes my tooth from the shelf and she chews garlic and puts them back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a joke about, you know, uh, old couple, you know, uh, that got divorced. Uh, of course, it's not a true story, but um, it reflects that, you know, respect. Yeah. Now, uh, we want to show you a uh, dessert today, and we'll give you a chance to taste it. It's called baklava. Very easy to make. Very easy to make. You will see in a video. And, of course, Lily, or Elsa, who usually presents, Elsa left for California because her sister passed away. And uh, Lily went there because she has some lectures there, health lectures in <coughs> Los Angeles area. So therefore, my wife made this baklava. And uh, we are going to show you a video, and you're going to taste it. The only difference, this in video, she uses cinnamon. My wife did not use cinnamon for the baklava she made. That's the only difference from what you see here. And... Uh, this lady will show the recipe using the butter uh, to make it vegan and more healthier. My wife uses Earth Balance regular yellow square pack. Earth Balance, it's a kind of very square, easy to find in Walmart, in uh, Kroger, it's there in a health uh, section. So, this is the recipe. Baklava. Find out why this is one of the most popular recipes for baklava online. It has the perfect balance of sweetness with the lemon curry. So this is from Walmart. Definitely a leader favorite, and you all are going to love it. I always start with the syrup because it needs time to cool. Combine three-fourths cup water, one cup sugar, half a cup of honey, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. Bring that to a boil, and when the sugar melts, reduce the heat and simmer for four minutes. Take it off the heat and set it aside. Finally, chop one pound of walnuts or pulse them ten times in a food processor. Add one teaspoon of 
spoon of cinnamon and stir to combine. I have a one pound box of store-bought fuel dough. Thaw according to package instructions, then leave it at room temperature for one hour before working with the dough. Trim the dough to fit your baking pan. Now you'll need a damp but not wet kitchen towel to keep the pastry covered at all times because it can dry out quickly. Butter your baking pan, then start layering the first So you use... Buttering each one as it goes into the pan. You use earth balance instead of butter to make it vegan and healthier because butter is and cholesterol. It's time to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll be the first to admit buttering the sheets is a little tedious, but it's so worth it in the end. I'll give you a printout with a link where you can watch this video. Sprinkle three fourths cup of your nut mixture evenly over the top. Okay, so, oops, we have a baklava for you to taste. Uh, where is Ready? Coming? It's coming. Oh, I want to show you these two slides. Marriage actually is a plant, but sometimes this plant is destroyed by bugs. And those bugs are our ignorance, impatience, and character defects. And those things destroy, may destroy that plant. So we have to protect.